This review is brought to you in part by Riders Hobby Shops, where the fun begins. Stop in to one of Riders' two convenient Michigan locations where you'll find a full range of the latest hobby products, supplies, parts, tools, and paint. This review covers the big 1969 Camaro Z28 Foos Design model from Ravel. It's model number 2811 in 1 scale. Well, way back in 67, Chevrolet debuted the Camaro to counteract the massive success that uh, came from the Ford's uh, Mustang model. Now it's not just a pretty face because the Camaro had both elegance and power in abundance and was popular with most segments of the population. Now Chip Foos has added his design touches to this large scale classic with special Foos design wheels. There's also some Foos license plates and script logos on the decal sheet as well as custom Foos body stripes. This kit is rated for the advanced builder because of its parts count and large decals. It's got 176 pieces molded in white, black, chrome, clear, and clear red with vinyl tires, tubing, and some wire. Now this is a 2013 re-release and it has all the original parts from the 1988 model as well. Now that includes a really nicely detailed 302 small block, posable front tires, and the kit lends itself well to extensive detailing. Overall the dimensions of the kit when finished are about 15 and 3 quarter inches long, 6 inches wide, and 4 and a quarter inches tall. Here are the contents of the kit. As you can see uh, it's pretty good sized. Um, it's a single purpose kit so most of the parts will go into the build uh, except for the additional new Foos touches. Now we'll be using mostly uh, slow setting tube glue for assembly because the parts have good positive contact points and um, there will be other items uh, used for construction occasionally some super glue but white glue for the um, you know the clear parts uh, transparent parts and uh, please remember to follow any of the uh, manufacturer's use uh, and safety guidelines when you hear or see of any products uh, mentioned in the review. These are the decals for the kit. As you can see they're colorful and the register is good. It's got uh, decals for interior parts, scripting, uh, the orange uh, stripes there are the Foos uh, uh, body stripes and it has uh, gauge decals and interior uh, decals as well. Construction starts with the nicely detailed motor and as you can see some of the parts of, uh, are black and uh, for the large part uh, they're just about the right sheen. Uh, you might not even have to paint some of them. Uh, the rest of them of course are going to be like a semi-gloss black and they're chrome parts here along with the, uh, the standard molded in white and don't forget your uh, decal for uh, some of the engine parts. And now from uh, also a previous version, you'll see these parts are in the kit. They're, they're not explained, but this is for a high-rise manifold with uh, you know some uh, induction stacks there. You could use them, but you'll have to cut a hole in the hood uh, for that to work. Now we can assemble the uh, engine block, uh, the heads, and the uh, timing cover uh, up front. And here you see uh, the basic engine has been painted and assembled um, uh, and also comes you know with uh, detailed shift levers uh, in the back on the transmission so you can you know paint those steel color as well. There's also a decal 27 that goes on the valve cover and um, we'll show you both sides of this so that you can see the various colors um, uh, but there's nothing uh, uh, out of the ordinary. It's of course Chevy Orange and uh, if you have a question about specific locations you can refer to the instructions at the end of the review. The kit comes with some wire uh, to make uh, spark plug wires out of but I preferred uh, orange color so I used an old uh, cat cable and cut the orange uh, wire out of it. Now there's uh, heater hoses as well and you can uh, cut those to length according to the instructions and use the excess to make uh, plug boots for your spark plug wires. Also we can work with the uh, headers here and they're two piece units per side uh, and you'll want to uh, scrape off the parting lines and sand those smooth uh, and you'll find parting lines and you know ejector pin marks in this model. It's an old design and uh, it can't be helped apparently so um, you'll have to work with those. So once you get them all cleaned up, they go on to the um, 
uh, motor and then uh, they are painted uh, steel color uh, before that and let them dry and then attach them as seen. And what you see here is the wiring diagram that's provided and there's also a template uh, on the instructions you know to cut the uh, wires but uh, they don't put the measurements on there so here they are uh, in case uh, you don't have the instructions uh, you can see them in the back but uh, here's your actual dimensions uh, for the plug wires now work slowly to allow time for the previous wires to cure in place before you go on to the next one and then um, I used a small drill actually with a pin vise to drill out the plug holes and distributor holes so that they were a little deeper and that makes them easier to uh, add your wires to. I wanted to add some more detailing to the engine bay so I got some uh, spare wire that I had and uh, some solder and this is um, or a wire I should say which is kind of a craft wire it's 18 gauge and I use that to run a fuel line from the fuel pump to the carbs and with the uh, red and black wire uh, I use that to uh, run battery wires to the starter and the ground and also use some black wire to make a vacuum line from the distributor to the carb it, it's pretty simple plumbing but it really adds some detail to uh, your model now you can get craft wire from a craft store and and uh, just um, electrical wire just about anywhere so here was my process to run the fuel line drill a small hole just large enough for the wire to fit snugly into the bottom of the fuel pump and then bend a small J into the wire insert it into the hole and super glue it in place now bend the wire to follow the contour of the front of the block to the intake and then bend the wire to an angle to curve it to a shape that will put the wire running through the center of the intake uh, and cut it out a little more than halfway across the top you'll connect it all up later now we'll take a look uh, at the vacuum advance and some others uh, here to run the vacuum lines to the uh, and wire the coil you drill a hole uh, the size of the wire you're using and then drill a hole in the center of the vacuum advance then uh, drill a hole also in the back of the distributor and two holes one on each side on uh, the top of the coil insert the black uh, vacuum line into the vacuum advance and cut it at a length long enough to reach the uh, front carburetor and here's a basic wiring diagram for the parts that I'm going to be working with and this is for a six but the ignition portion is the same you see the battery at the top there just below that the coil and it is pointing at the distributor now off to the right is the starter and those are the things will be um, wiring the uh, solenoid to the starter is just you know attached to it right there that round circle using a red wire uh, insert it into the coil uh, the hole that you drilled there and then run that wire down to the solenoid on the starter that's the gold unit on top of the starter where you can drill a hole for that then use a black wire and insert it into the other hole in the coil that you drilled and run that to the hole in the distributor now super glue all the wires in place insert a long length of red wire for the battery and the coil wire into the hole in the solenoid and super glue it into place then you'll cut the red battery wire uh, to fit later on next drill a hole in the back of the starter for the battery negative terminal cable and then drill a hole for the battery positive and the coil lead into the back of the solenoid now insert a long length of black wire to the starter hole and super glue that in place later on you'll cut it to fit onto the battery the instructions have us uh, put the carburetors in place later on by the way they're really nicely detailed and they're chrome and I wanted to paint them a gold tone like GM carbs so I just uh, soaked them in some household bleach about 10 minutes is all it'll take and some take longer and once it's stripped clean uh, the parts uh, need to be washed with some soapy water and then dried then assemble the carbs and paint them gold and line them up in place on the intake but this is just a mock-up so don't glue them into place yet now to at attach fuel lines we'll need to also include a fuel valve so we'll have to make that from scratch from just a little piece of scrap uh, rectangular plastic drill you know some holes large enough for the uh, wire uh, fuel lines and then using some craft wire and gold uh, I'll make the uh, carburetor lines and 
I inserted the carb line into the hole and roughly measured uh, it by a fit for the bends and then I drilled a small hole in the carb fuel intake to accept the line. I inserted the main fuel line into the hole and in the valve and glued the carbs into place. Now once the air filter is installed the detail will barely show but it's enough to show that it's there from an angle. Next we can start working on the uh, chassis parts uh, as you can see here and um, there's also some uh, copyright text uh, that will need to be removed so just scrape it off with a uh, hobby knife and then sand the area smooth. Now adding extra details can cause uh, double work. Uh, in this case uh, the battery already had wires um, you know uh, connected to it. The battery cables are there so uh, to do this right you'd have to remove those and replace them with the wires that we uh, installed onto the solenoid etc. Now we can work on the, uh, the chassis and frame and uh, this is a photo from uh, future down into the build but uh, as you can see here's some of the detailing we'll be doing. So first prime the whole chassis in gray and on the bottom tape off the front frame the side rails and the rear frame and paint that black uh, semi gloss black. Now paint the wheel wells flat black and then the gas tank is steel color with black straps. Highlight the brake and fuel lines uh, with a silver sharpie and then paint the top side uh, wheel wells a satin black. Now paint the firewall satin black and highlight the wires there that are mounted on the accessories in black and silver and paint the steering box black as well. Now the transmission mount uh, gets the same color and then the inner frame is black with a black battery and a white radiator overflow tank and make the cap black too. Now detail the battery with red caps and steel posts and connectors and drill a hole next to the connectors for the battery cables to attach. Now on the battery uh, um, install decal number 24. After the chassis is thoroughly dried insert the upper frame into place and glue it there. Then install the firewall and then add the steering box. Now insert the motor into place. Look for the uh, motor mounts and use some strong glue there to keep it in position. Install the transmission mount and run the battery cables up to the battery and cut them to uh, the proper length to fit in place. Now insert them into the holes in the battery and super glue them in. The brake booster master cylinder and heater hoses are next and you can collect them up uh, as you see them here. And then using the two cut hoses from earlier, install the 4 inch tube into the lower hole in the heater core and run that to the hole on top of the intake. And then the 4 and 5 8 inch tube gets run from the upper hole in the heater core to the top hole in the water pump. For additional detail, you can cut some thin strips of bare metal foil and wrap them around the ends of the tubing to make it look like clamps. Use a thicker piece of foil to make a hose holder and then wrap the both hoses together about halfway back and paint the brake booster gold. Now the master cylinder gets painted steel with a gold top and install the brake booster onto the firewall and insert the master cylinder into place. So back to the box of parts and uh, grab out these, uh, these uh, to assemble the uh, radiator assembly uh, including some decals. Paint the radiator wall, shroud and hood latch uh, and the lower hose a flat black. Then paint the hose clamps on the hose silver. Now paint the uh, radiator silver with black side tanks and uh, assemble them by attaching the radiator to the back of the side of the radiator wall. Then attach the shroud to the radiator. Now add the hood latch to the front of the radiator wall. And then use decals 25 and 6 on top of the radiator wall. Insert the lower hose into the radiator and then install the assembly onto the chassis lining up the hose with the lower output of the water pump. Now we can begin work on the front suspension parts. We're going to paint the sway bar upper and lower A arms and the front brace uh, black, uh, semi gloss black, and paint the spindles and brakes steel. Now the uh, calipers are gold. Attach the sway bar into place and insert the front brace into the slot on the frame and mount it in, into place there. Now attach the lower A arms in place and the sway bar gets glued to those. Without gluing them, snap the spindles onto the lower A arms and then slide the upper A arms in from the top side of the inner fender well and snap the spindle to it and 
glue them uh, in the and the A, A arms into place. Now there's a small amount of molding, a uh, little parting line there on the sway bar that could be removed if you want a nice finish uh, for a contest model. Now we can work on the uh, rotors and calipers, but there's a construction issue here that's not fully explained in the instructions. If you're going to use the Foos wheels, reverse the mounting of the brakes so that it will fit properly onto the Foos wheels uh, in, into them and then uh, makes a proper look uh, of the caliper and rotor. Uh, the first one here you see was the, um, uh, that was the uh, factory stock wheel option, but this pick here is the uh, Foos wheel option. Now the instructions aren't real clear on this, but if you do that, when you go to install the Foos wheels, you'd have a flat disc with no caliper because they won't show right. Now we'll look for these parts and the uh, drive shaft and the exhaust will get installed. So paint the um, drive shaft aluminum with steel yokes and gold U-joints and paint the exhaust pipes steel with silver or aluminum colored mufflers. Now insert the uh, drive shaft into the transmission but don't glue it in place yet. Now assemble the exhaust pipes and insert those into the headers and glue them in place on the chassis. And before you finish these parts, uh, make sure to remove uh, any parting lines that you need to or, or ejector pin marks. All three parts need to be sanded and cleaned up. Here's some bonus parts that are in this kit. You can see the longer extended set of um, shackles for the uh, rear brake uh, uh, springs. Now uh, that's to give it more of a rake and a kind of a hot rod look. I chose to use those but if you don't like that you can just use the uh, shorter stock set. Again, with differences for the Foos build, um, if you make it with your kit with the stock wheel version, you need to include the parts uh, for the front suspension that aren't used on the wheel uh, for the Foos version. So you see here the pin, the black pin, they get used on both versions, but the wheel backs are not. For a stock uh, you know, version, paint the wheel back a flat black with the outer rim and lip silver. And for the Foos version, you don't use these wheel backs. Uh, to install the stock version, just insert the pin into the wheel back and glue it just uh, to the, the tip of the pin in the spindle. And then I'm using the Foos wheel, so I omitted this step. I'll use uh, the set of pins later for assembly. We'll be using these pieces, so I'll look those up in the, in the kit uh, to install the rear suspension. Paint the uh, rear axle and the leaf springs uh, black, and then uh, paint the shackles that you choose to use black and paint the front uh, tie rod black as well. These are all semi-gloss black. Now paint the shocks of your choice, so whatever favorite brand color you like, and then assemble the uh, uh, shackles onto the frame and uh, insert the drive shaft uh, into the differential and install the rear suspension. Now install the shocks and snap the front tie rod into place. Uh, it won't need any glue. But wait! There's yet another Foos build issue here. The instruction sheet omits the rear brakes completely for the Foos version, but there's no way to install the rear tires without the brakes. For mounting the Foos wheels, paint the brakes steel and install them onto the rear axle. And if you use the stock wheels, the brakes are installed on the rear wheel backs. And now it's time to pick uh, the wheel set that you want to use. You see the Foos wheels at the top. Uh, and tires are totally different, but uh, it's uh, up to you uh, depending on your uh, preference and uh, we'll get into that construction right now. And I'm using the Foos set, so uh, those are directional tires and they also have a smaller front tire size than the rears. So caution is needed when mounting the rims and tires together for both size and direction. Also, make sure when you're mounting uh, them on the car that the direction is in the proper uh, you know, on side of the car. So prepare the tire to use uh, uh, for um, you know, some road work here with some 20-20 grit sandpaper that you just uh, scuff the uh, tread area on and then roll the tire as you press it on the paper to kind of rough it up. Now uh, just as a uh, way to do that when you're looking at the vehicle uh, from the front of the vehicle the point of the V's or the direction will be coming at you and touching the ground uh, first. So I'm going to gather the parts to assemble uh, the wheels and so um, get the uh, pin and the retainer 
onto the rim insert the pin there into the retainer back and glue the retainer into the rim. Now the retainer needs to be painted silver and paint the rim backs silver. Uh, do this for all four rims and then glue the front rims to the front backs on the proper sides. Here's a look at the completed wheel sets and remember the direction and size differences uh, need to be maintained. Now assemble by inserting the completed rim into the tire and line up the tire bead to the lip of the rim. Also as a reminder throughout the build um, scrape off any uh, chrome plating or, or paint uh, on pieces that you need to glue together. And so here are the uh, wheels and tires installed on the front suspension there. You see that they are poseable um, because those um, spindles are trapped, not glued into place. The instructions have you put the wheels and tires on later, but it's perfectly fine to do it now. So you can uh, get those into position if you want. And then here is a look at the completed uh, chassis assembly. Um, the undercarriage is now finished off. No further work uh, be needed on this part uh, unless you want to install the body uh, during final assembly. Um, you can set it aside for now. So here is a look at the uh, chassis, uh, the rolling chassis from the side. Now if you notice um, the, the bottom of the floor pan there towards the left side there's a little bit of height there and that comes from those extended shackles. And here you'll notice uh, there, are, there are a lot of parts, and these are going to be used to complete the interior. Uh, it gets uh, put together in stages, as I want to do some extra detailing that's not part of the kit. Now, all optional construction, of course, and finishing will be explained uh, as I do things that aren't uh, uh, shown in the instructions. And as I paint the assembly, uh, you know, I can call them out on each step are the parts for the dash uh, assembly. You can see it's pretty uh, intricate and there's two column choices there. Also some chrome pieces. And uh, there are two sets of dash decals included. And you get uh, both the stock instruments and some upgraded foos instruments plus all the Z28 wood grain um, appliques etc. And so here you see the interior bucket and the side panels. And uh, I'm going to do a little bit of custom painting on this because the exterior is a monotone uh, stock look, and I'm going to add uh, a custom two-tone uh, you know, feature to the interior. And we'll use the base body color to highlight the black interior. Now the seats will have a fabric center area as a matching color as well, and the pedals will be painted flat black with silver details. Now prime all the parts that you plan to paint, and then paint the lightest color, uh, color of the detail first, you know. Uh, you, if you're going to paint uh, two colors, paint the lighter one first. Okay, then tape off the area you want to protect that you painted the color on, and then paint the overall color. Now, uh, we'll put it together, so attach the uh, grab handle and the window crank to each door panel, and attach a window crank on each rear panel. Then paint the door lock knob and the uh, trim strip uh, silver, and install decal number 11 on each door panel. Now the pedals will be installed after the floor is, uh, floor is uh, detailed. For added realism, I wanted to uh, add carpeting that looks authentic in this vehicle. It's a little larger scale, so uh, flocking, which is um, short carpet fibers that are packaged, and you can find them at hobby shops, etc., or even at craft stores, uh, will be used. And I'm going to mix two colors, both a charcoal and a black, uh, and then uh, you just stir it up and mix it up. Then uh, to apply it, you use uh, some thinned uh, white glue and then you paint the areas you want to cover with the flocking. And then you uh, put some of the flocking into a, a filter, a fine, you know, like a sh shaker filter. And then you just uh, shake it on to the areas that you've painted with your white glue. Then you, uh, you let it set and after it's uh, done, you just uh, turn it upside down uh, shake it and tap it a little bit to get the loose stuff off. And then it looks really nice. I wanted to add a little custom touch to the uh, interior with floor mats, so I found an image that I wanted to use and um, I just uh, sized it to one and a half inches tall, printed on some regular paper uh, with a color inkjet printer and then, and then glued it to some cardstock uh, with some spray glue. And cut those out and you've got yourself a nice custom set of floor mats. Up next are the front seats and the console, and just like all the other pieces, uh, clean them up of any uh, parting lines and uh, ejector pin marks, etc. 
Now the front seats that uh, I'm using are going to have a two-tone effect. So we're going to assemble the seat backs and the seat fronts together. And remove the parting line along the seat sides as needed. You know, clean that up, uh, smooth it out, and prime the seats and paint the center area a yellow. And then mask off the area and then paint the whole seat black. Now paint the console black and the shift knob yellow with a flat black boot. And on the console you use uh, a number of decals 13 through 15 in the shifter area. And depending on your build, either 5 or 10 and 4 or 9 for the instrument cluster. You know, if you want to use the shift uh, or the uh, foos dials or not. Now decal 21 goes on the shift knob. Now, with that done, install the seats into place. Insert the shifter into the hole in the console from the inside and glue it in place. And then assemble the console top and the bottom and install the interior. Now you can watch the magic happen as we turn this bare bones dashboard into a thing of beauty. Now it's going to be the last part uh, for your interior. So you're going to be using some decals again. Cut them from the decal sheet but don't use water for the gauges. Just cut it them out and use some white glue to install them on the back side of the paper into the instrument panel. Now 17 through 20 and number 11 needs to get installed as normal on the dash. Paint the glove box lock silver. Highlight the instrument panel area with a silver sharpie or a chrome pen and paint the pull handle black and install it on the dash. Now add the chrome knobs into place. Assemble the steering column and paint it black. Paint the turn signal and tilt lever tips black and install those. Then add the steering wheel center. Now paint the rim of the steering wheel brown as in wood tone and install it. Then add decal number 12 to the center. Insert the steering column into the dash and then install the assembly into the waiting receivers on the interior. Now with the uh, seats installed and the dash in place your outstanding looking uh, interior is ready to be added to the chassis assembly. And next we're going to work on the body and you're going to want to prepare all the body parts first you know by cleaning up any seams, uh, any parting lines, any ejector pins, uh, any attachment points etc. But first we need to add the hood hinges to the hinge. And as you see here on the left uh, the spoiler that goes on the rear deck lid. Once you have the body all prepped with the major things uh, we're going to get ready for primer. So wet sand all of the parts with 1000 or 1200 grit sandpaper and then let them fully dry. Now prime all the parts inside and out and after the primer is dry you can water sand it again to get a nice smooth finish and then paint the parts your choice of body color. Decal as you decide to do and then clear coat them after. The body then interior will be painted flat black. Paint uh, on a vehicle this size is pretty important and how I approach it is to uh, usually start with the underside, uh, wheel wells etc and then around the outside uh, perimeter and then over the trunk and hood and uh, the roof. Now uh, it helps if you put a couple of light tack coats on there first just to get the paint to start adhering. Wait about 10 minutes and then start some medium coats. You're going to want to put at least uh, one or two medium coats. And then uh, about 30 minutes later, add your nice uh, full wet coat for a good shiny smooth finish. And now it's time to decal your uh, car and um, this could be pretty critical. Fortunately, these decals are very good. Um, they're just the right thickness for flexibility yet uh, durable enough to position around. Use plenty of warm water and put the warm water down on the area you're going to add your decal to fix it into position. And then smooth out any air bubbles or anything underneath uh, with a nice soft cloth or a cotton swab to get uh, any of the air bubbles out from underneath them. You may need to use some setting solution uh, on some of the contours uh, to make sure that the decals nestle into them and look like paint. Next we'll start working with some trim and uh, I use uh, this product bare metal foil it's uh, good stuff it's um, on, it's got some competitors but it's still my favorite. Now um, a lot of people will clear coat their model before they add the trim but 
frankly, I like to put it on afterwards to seal the chrome trim into place. So it's just like a tape, uh, a metal tape with a, uh, an adhesive back. You cut out strips, you add it to the trim areas that you want, and you uh, press it and apply it, and then you trim off the extra with a sharp knife. Now that's imperative. Get a brand new blade when you do this and use as little as pressure as possible to uh, guide along the foil that you want to trim off so that you don't cut into the paint. Here are the parts to complete the front end and uh, uh, the body portions there. And paint the spoiler and the grill satin black and highlight the grill with some silver. Now assemble the headlights and install them into the grill. Uh, remember, you got to scrape off uh, chrome uh, from any places you want to glue and with uh, respect to clear parts use some crystal clear or some white glue to put those in place. Then attach the Z28 logo to the grill. Now insert the grill into place and add the fog lights and insert them into the fascia. Attach the bumper, cut out the tag with some white glue and attach it to the license plate frame and attach that into place. Now we can add the mirrors and the glass, um, and uh, as you can see, uh, it's a good sized piece of glass. Uh, now the rear view mirror gets attached uh, to the arm that is then added to the tab between the visors on the front glass. Paint the visors flat black and install the front glass with some white glue or crystal clear. Then install the rear glass, and there's a small pin on the inside of the roof, and attach the glass to the pin with some white glue or or crystal clear and put that into place. You can see that the interior was painted flat black like we had mentioned earlier. And now you're seeing some um, of the tail lights, the bezels, and some side trim. And um, we're, the tail lights are glued into the housings in the bezels, and then the housings are installed from inside the body. Uh, remember to scrape the chrome uh, and any paint if you want to uh, uh, glue parts together there. And there's a line on the lower body to install the moldings into as well. Now look for some contact points along the uh, ridges and we're going to install the interior bucket into the uh, vehicle. You see the um, pin here uh, in the circle. Uh, that's to locate the interior uh, for position. So go ahead and use some uh, nice strong glue and glue that into place inside the uh, body of the car. Once the interior bucket is in place and it should stay there um, we're going to add the ch uh, chassis to the body. Now start at the front and kind of shoehorn the body uh, into the chassis. It, it'll you just uh, spread the uh, sidewalls apart a little bit and it'll fall into place pretty easily without much issue. Start at about a 45 degree angle and then uh, lower it down towards uh, you know the back, uh, working it from the front to the back. Now the chassis will then easily slide into place until you get to the rear quarters. Uh, now there, you have to pull the quarter panels out just a little bit to let the chassis slide into position. And now we can add these parts to the rear of the vehicle, uh, attach the rear pan into place, and then attach the bumper to the rear pan. Now cut the uh, license to fit inside the tag holder, and then glue it in with some uh, white glue or crystal clear. Then attach the tag to the body pan and into place. Now we'll add some of the accessory chrome pieces to the uh, body, and um, I, the, I painted uh, the wiper blades black, and uh, to, but to install them, I had to slightly bend the blade a little bit uh, to give it the right curvature. Uh, but be careful, you don't want to break it. Now attach the antenna, and then the door handles go on each door, and attach the mirror to the mount and glue that to the door as well. Okay, we're going to finish up the engine bay assembly now. And we're going to paint the crossbars, the radiator hose, and the filter housing flat black. Then paint the clamps on the hose silver. Now paint the filter on the filter cover flat white. And attach each crossbar to the radiator support and then under the fender to the fender wall. Now glue the radiator hose to the radiator and then to the intake. And finally add the filter housing to the carbs and set the filter in place. But don't glue it there. Install the hood. And now. The radiator hose has a molding line on it that you may want to remove. Now these are the parts that I had left over and you'll have some parts left over as this is a two-in-one kit and you can build either version. So depending on which ones you use, you'll have the parts left from the other one. 
there's some pretty nice stuff here, uh, especially if you build 112 cars. Well, there you have it. Your model is done. And this gorgeous looking Fus adaption of the Z28, um, I, I think it has just the right appointments for something special. But uh, this bumblebee will be cruising down Woodward here pretty soon, just buzzing up and down the strip. And if I were you, I'd buy one and put it on my shelf. Well, we hope you like this premium step-by-step -step model kit review. So that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can do that by clicking on the icon in the lower right hand of any of our reviews. And you can find us on Facebook or our website, right on replicas.com. Thanks!